Good day and welcome back to my channel. So this is my next update on the Nautilus. And I'm at a point where um, I, I need to start doing, I need to start getting it ready to, to prime and, and get the painting done. But to do that, I need to know, um, I need to get a look at the, the overall look of the thing and, and you know, how this new conning tower looks and so forth. But to do so, to do that, I kind of need to hit it with a shadow primer. Um, but to prime it, I need to put all in all my details and so forth. So I had to get it ready for you know to get to that stage, um, which meant doing masking up the windows. Now, um, what the uh, um, one of the nice things about this kit is it provides window they actually give us window masks so these guys here we get two sheets of this okay and this sheet um has numbered pieces right and they're just little pre-cut there you can see they're pre-cut you just peel them on out and you stick them on and you know they give you you know this is your your thing here, right? But they give you this mask, the, your window mask application. So there's two issues with this, okay? So um, the first one has to do with the small window. The small window is basically that cage and your glass sits underneath it. Um, it sits deep underneath that window and or deep underneath the thing, and um, you can't get to it. I mean, it's probably about three millimeters or less, maybe one or two, one or two millimeters behind that cage, but you really can't get to it. You can't get at it to put a mask on it. So this doesn't work. <laughs> um, that That's simply a non-starter. So for that for that, um, I used this, and, or actually, I'm sorry, not that. I used, I used that for something else. I used this. So I used my liquid frisket, and you just paint it on, and it creates like a rubber coating that you can just peel off, and it's got enough surface tension that you can actually stretch it between the, the brackets of the the cage there. So. Um, that's what I'm using to mask that glass. Okay, so I, I used the frisket and I spread it out over the the openings in that cage to do that. Now you can see around the edge a little bit that it's not perfect. That there's little pieces, like little bits of it here. Now you can see what I'm doing there. See how that's pulling up. Um, and what that means is that's going to be a piece of your model that's unmasked. Now, for the most part, that's a part of the model that's going to be weathered and fatigued anyway. So it doesn't matter. But you can see, you just saw how easy it is to remove this stuff once I got that down there. So, um, that that was problem number one. Now, your second issue is with these. Um, that's going to take you a very... Oops, I apologize for that. That's going to take you a very inordinately large amount of time to put that on. So what you do is you come into here, and I started off with these guys, number two, and you pull off one of these, and then you stick them down in the window, and you find a spot and you organize them and spread them around. And you do them all the way around that center. So like this, this would go into that spot right there, right? So that was number two, it tells you number one. Now you can see how big some of these mask pieces are. Um, you know, th this one here, these right there, um, 
There's those right there. Th these are kind of small, and they're going to be incredibly fiddly. So I tried it. Um, I actually spent about 20 minutes putting four of those in place, putting these four in. And I realized as I got there that they're not perfect. So the you can see, even though I have this stuff on it, you can see that there is a raised, you know, the the this thing here has a raised the glass has the the framework, that's the word I'm looking for. It has the framework raised. Um, and the mask does not sit perfectly in that area. It actually sits, they're, they're not cut perfectly, so it doesn't make the correct pie shape because the angles are off just enough that it doesn't look like this. So I'm going to put up a picture right now of, of what it looked like when I did that. So I've got one. Here it is. So that's what it looked like when I had done that. When I'd gotten that piece done, um, that's what that ended up looking like. And I, I understand that that is going to create, it's going to show up when you go to paint it. So short version, didn't like it. Um, then I got to thinking about how much time was involved in just doing that. And I realized, um, well, this framework is raised. And... You know, that's, that's edge painting. So what I decided to do was that my time would be better spent in hairy brushing it. So what I did, again, as I used this stuff, and I spread it around all of that. And you can see here, that's, that's what that stuff is. That's why it looks like it's all globby. So I spread that stuff over those, over the, the two lights, and over the main windows. So now when I go in and spray this, um, the entire salon window will not be painted and I will have to go back and repaint it, which, ah, darn it, I'm sorry, this is what I get for having a setup that relies on something I can bump, so my apologies. Um, anyway, I, I can go back and after I've primed and done all that stuff, I can go back to the salon window and paint it, and I will paint it using this stuff, um, this Brassy Brass from Vallejo. Um, their game color range. This stuff is what I'm going to use to highlight a lot of the edge pieces here. Um, I might I actually try it out a little bit of it down there. You can kind of see it just a little bit, but it edge highlights well. It edge paints very, very well, um, and I'm very used to that color, so I'm used to how that flows, and and that's. What, uh, what I'm going to do. That was my choice. So, um, the last thing I need to do before I prime this is I need to finish this. Um, so there's my, the conning tower that I made. Um, put the little door there. Um, if I can find a, a turn, a little wheel thing, and I think I, I have one in my bits box, I will probably put one there on the cover. Um, but the only thing I need to do is I, I because it, it is still at cardstock, I can't quite, my, my brain isn't filling in the spaces right. So um, I wanted to prime it to get a look at how that is so that I can finish it. And so I can also get, I want to put a periscope. Um, I want to put a periscope here and maybe a snorkel on the other side um, so that, uh, you know, it, it, so it has those pieces there. Um, and I also need to put the, railing here um, and the, the stuff here. So anyway, but to do this, to do this, there's something clearly missing on those pieces, on those plates that's present on all the rest of these plates, and that's those rivets. So I have multiple methods for doing rivets. What I have done in the past more than anything else, I make a very small piece of, of green stuff, and then I cut it. Um, and I used, I'm trying to reach it over here, here we go. So I tried epoxy sculpt, because I've never used that stuff before. I have some, and I've never used epoxy sculpt. That's what I used actually to make the uh, ramming fin right there. Um, and it worked fairly well. 
But what I typically would do with this is uh, you make this nice little thin piece of stuff, and then you snip off these little tiny pieces that give you a rivet. And then you glue them in. So the trick with that is the rivets on this are, they're, they're very pronounced. They're also very regular and they have a certain look. Um, and when you look at a model, certain things draw your eye. And one of the things about this model is that rivet detail. Those rivet details are, are key to this model, even though there's going to be some PE here and some things there. The key part of this model is that rivet detail um, and how that looks. That's, that's one of those things that's going to make this thing look right or look wrong. Um, so the, that method, the, 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 the little cut rivet piece method, um, you get semi-irregular because you can never cut them exactly the same height and you can never make them look right. Um, they're good for filling in spaces. They're great for um, details that are going to get knocked around. But there's other, there are other methods that are used, and I've used them as well. And what you do is you take another methodology. And this I got from flying scale helicopters. And when you do scale, scale helis, um, sometimes you know, you'll get a clean... Uh, fiberglass fuselage and you have to put your rivet detail in and this was a method you can buy little sticky rivets and they're like these things are like these masks um, and you can just stick them on another method is to use some sort of medium and put it on and that becomes your rivet when it dries and so what I did is I did a test here of different materials and how they show or how they dry up and then how they paint and I used white glue I used super glue I used Vallejo model putty I used liquid green stuff I used the masking frisket and I used that crystal clear so I used you know these two things as well as uh, super glue gel as well as um, you know all those those little fill things that I mentioned and I applied them all the same way using the same tool and then I let them dry and then I hit them with a shot of of uh, Vulcan metal and the one that looks the best is this stuff this one comes out looking the most consistent and looking about right so that went on the easiest, well, it went on easy, and I got a very, very, very consistent result. And I used this to do that. So that was, of all things, this stuff. That was micro crystal clear. And so that's what I'm going to do. So to show you how it was done, I'm going to do this. You take a little bit of your micro crystal clear, because you don't need a lot. See how that consistency is. And you put it on a place where you can get at it. So I'll put it on the card so I can actually do it. Now, what I'll do is when I go to put it on the model, and I'm not, I'm not going to try and put it on the model while we're talking because that's it, it's very specific and I'm not used to working around the camera. But I'll show you how to do it. So you take that and you get that there, and then you just go dip and from this distance I can't quite see so let me go ahead and I'm gonna shake the camera here a bit I'll zoom in a bit all right so now if I can do this through the camera so you get a nice glob there and then you put that in place in another one and then you put that in place. And another glob. And then you put that in place. And you see how you can get a fairly consistent result. That's 
a little short, so then I'll glob that in now. And after about five or six, I need to wash off my pencil. And then I go back. And another. And another. And so on and so on. And that gives you the raised detail. And that raised detail is similar. It will be similar to the rivets we have there. They're rounded at the top. They're raised. Um, and that's what I'm going to be looking for. So what I will now do off camera is I will go back and I'm going to rivet all this stuff. I'm going to run rivets along the sides here. Um, and that's going to take me a while. Um, it's, it's, you saw how long it, take to, it took to do five. Um, and it's a matter of locating each spot where you want them and then putting them on and da 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 So once those rivets are in, I'll go ahead and zoom back out. Once those rivets are in, um, I can then see, you know, what all, if there's anything that needs to be added to that counting tower, you know, along with the um, snorkel or periscope. Anyway, so that's where I am right now. Um, and I will go ahead and, and crack and get that stuff done. And, you know, I've, I've sort of waffled on now for about 15 minutes or so. So I will let you go, say thank you very much. I hope this is, again, as always, I hope this inspires you and um, gives you some little tricks or trade tricks of the trade and some concepts on, on ways to do some of this stuff. And you're enjoying my trip. And I will talk to you again next time.